Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been another intense week for load shedding following a short period of reprieve. Terence Creamer is here to discuss developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Load shedding returned with a vengeance this week as a cold front hit. Yes, this was always going to be the test for the so-called recovery of the Eskom plant and it failed it unfortunately quite dismally. I think that there was in the, you know, ahead of winter, there was a lot of fear around going beyond stage six. So at least we haven't done that. We haven't gone to stage eight. So, uh, and I think that has been partially because, or largely because Eskom has been able to stabilize the coal fleet to some extent. But this was always in a context of very much lower demand than was being forecast ahead of winter. So the ahead of winter, it was sort of the 34,000 to 35,000 sort of peak demand. And we started hitting that as the cold front came through, especially in Kauteng. Kauteng is where if there's a lot of uh, a cold front, th it's a really high demand, high load province. So that's really the test case. And it's been a very mild winter. So we've been having very low demand for much of winter, especially in the northeastern parts of the country. Uh, I know the rest of uh, southern parts have been experiencing quite a, a torrid winter, but that's not where the high load is. And then we've also had the industrial, the heavy industrial users having switched off when the winter tariffs clicked over on the 1st of June. So that's helped. We had good wind performance uh, out of the wind plants over peak periods, and that's helped. So th it's, but it's really been a, a story of low demand. And as soon as that demand started to ratchet up with the cold front, we've experienced that Eskom really hasn't been able to cope, even though we had this really good period of very low levels of load shedding, which was a relief to the whole country. So yes, it came back, as you say, with a vengeance, and it's with us at stage six at the moment. This comes as South Africa marks a year since the launch of the Energy Action Plan to tackle load shedding. Yes, so we've seen this intensification of load shedding uh, the frequency and intensity of load shedding over the last 2021, 2022, and now 2023, definitely the worst ever year. So we've had the worst ever year in 2021, the worst ever year in 2022, and, and we definitely, in terms of the amount of days of load shedding and the amount of energy shed, 2023 has uh, surpassed all those terrible records. So uh, the, in 25th of July last year, so nearly a year ago, the president announced to the country an energy action plan basically to tackle the intensity and frequency of load shedding. Now over the last few weeks prior to this cold front we have seen a decrease in the intensity of load shedding. I think largely, I said the demand, but also partly the issue of the improvement in the Eskom performance, which is a big issue. It's the most immediate lever that we can pull because we haven't built at the pace and scale uh, of replacement. Uh, generation, mostly renewables and flexible generation. We just haven't done that. Uh, there was a massive t seven to eight year hiatus in building, uh, really uh, induced by a state capture era and decisions made over that period. So we're very behind schedule. And then the gaps have obviously increased because of the delays and then the badly, badly perform performances of Madupi and Kusilia in particular that were supposed to help close the gap. So the Energy Action Plan has now been underway for almost a full year and we're seeing some areas of improvement. I think there's definitely signs that some of the security issues uh, that were, were knocking around uh, towards the end of last year and early this year that led to the army going onto those sites. There seems to be some sort of improvement there but we haven't got our hands fully around definitely that not the corruption issue. And, but it seems on the sabotage front, maybe that there's been some improvement. And I think there has been a work stream at the National Energy Crisis Committee specifically focused on that. And then there has been the reform that's seen the pipeline of embedded generation projects at a large scale. Uh, that has really increased quite uh, strongly because of the reform of allowing projects of any size uh, to connect to the grid and not to have to go through a licensing process. So that's been important. But you know, on a number of other fronts, especially on the public procurement, there really hasn't been the progress that we needed. 
uh, we do now have the determinations in place uh, finally to allow for that procurement to take place. But it's been a fairly stop start and the grid issues have definitely come to the fore. And uh, to the credit of the minister, uh, he's raising the electricity minister who was appointed after the energy ac action plan was announced, Hussein Saramakhopa, he's saying that we need to pay much more attention to grid issues, which we are. But those are also long lead items and it's going to be difficult to navigate this period of, of grid scarcity with a number of projects wanting to come in, both private to private projects as well as the public procurement projects. We are seeing a number of interventions that are being made by Eskom to facilitate the connection despite the scarcity, but we've still got programs that are open like the risk mitigation and the bid window five where projects haven't closed yet and they are sterilizing grid, much needed grid capacity. We, you know, we haven't had great visibility, I think, from Eskom of what is still available, but I think there's a new grid uh, capacity plan that's going to come out. We do know that there are new grid, grid uh, ru um, queuing rules that have been introduced, and you know, it's a sort of shift to a project or shovel-ready project uh, emphasis, and I think that is important. But there's a number of work streams that are feverishly uh, working uh, to get some stability and re decreasing the, both the intensity, which we saw a bit of a period of reprieve, but the frequency of load shedding remains very hard daily. We've had one or two days in this whole year where we haven't had load shedding. So the energy action plan, I think it's too early to, to claim any easy victories. And I think, I think there, that was, there was a bit of a, a feeling that we were getting over the hump of load shedding. I think that this last week has shown that we've got a long way to go. It also comes as government and ESCOM consider concessions at the coal stations to improve performance. Yes, you know, when the, the big uh, 254 billion uh, debt relief package was announced by the Minister of Finance in February, he said that part of that is that ESCOM couldn't invest uh, in the generation side, in new generation. They can obviously do the maintenance uh, of the, the current fleet and there's much more certainty or visibility of the financing for the maintenance program than there has been for many, many years. And that's important to try and get that, the, the maintenance on a sort of a, a, a even tempo to get the plants in a better, performing better than they are because we've seen a, a massive decline in the energy availability factor. And also they weren't allowed to raise any new fresh debt. And that's because we've seen a lot of money going out of Eskom and a lot of wasted money and some of it uh, not necessarily linked directly to corruption but to waste but there's also been the corruption element so Treasury wanted to tighten the purse strings as they give them more of a bailout um, and then the other issue is that Treasury said we want to have a consortium of e experts go and interrogate these, the state of these plants and whether some of them shouldn't be concessioned to the private to private operators to try and if Eskom can't do it, could the private operators do that? Now that process is coming to a head now, uh, this month, where we, there should be a report as to what the state of this is, and whether there's any uh, uh, element that can be concessioned so that we can s sort of stabilise supply from the existing fleet. We'll we'll wait and see what comes out of that. But uh, in the meantime, Eskom itself is looking at various concessioning models. They've been looking at, obviously, the repowering of certain power stations that are going to retire, but that would be non-coal. But there would be uh, an element of maybe power stations that are really troubled within the fleet that they might want to bring in uh, operators. Hendrina has been mentioned. But uh, on the whole, it looks more and more that Eskom might be looking at specific plant areas with inside a power station to say, look, we're really struggling in this area and we're going to concession or partner, either concession or partner with the private sector on a long-term basis and see if they can help stabilise that area uh, so that we can improve the, the performance of the power station. So it's, there's no real visibility of what it means, but there's definitely a lot of thought and definitely under the National Energy Crisis Committee, thought is also going into that. So from the Treasury, NECOM, and from Eskom, there is a lot of thought going into this issue. Thank you.
That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.